everyone. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Movies About Music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think I've been this annoyed in a really long time. I've never, I've never seen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I've never seen this kind of visceral reaction <laughs> to a movie just of complete and utter mm-hmm. annoyance. Yeah, I mean, I felt like I was being tortured. Like, I felt like I was being punished for something. Yeah. Yeah. And I almost didn't make it to the end. Well, I, I don't think you did. Like, you kind of started tuning out there at the end. Yeah. So what happened? First of all, what movie did we see? So you've been ta- you've been saying, let we have to do Honeysuckle Rose. Yeah. We have to do Honeysuckle Rose. And I didn't do any research mm-hmm. on it because I, I trust you because you're my husband. Oh, no. Is it going to be that? And I don't... I didn't think that you would put me through, you know, just sheer torture so i never imagined Uh i i thought it was a movie about rock and roll i don't know i thought you know well this was our first um you know i was trying to think of the genres we've covered Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we've been talking about doing this Mm -hmm. movie and i'll explain why Mm -hmm. in a minute but i felt like we haven't done country yet Mm -hmm. um for good reason i guess well i mean we can we can have that discussion Mm -hmm. but so i wanted to i want to do this this is like a movie about the country music scene. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I wanted to do this movie Mm -hmm. is because it's part of my childhood memory. I guess my mom and dad went to see this movie. Mm. I don't know if we kids saw it or not. I can't remember. I know I've seen this movie before. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I saw it when I was a little kid. But my dad was crazy about Willie Nelson. Like Mm -hmm. we grew up with Willie Nelson in the Mm -hmm. household. So he was very excited to see this movie. And then he got the soundtrack and he brought the soundtrack home and it was just constantly on. Like he would Mm -hmm. play it and he would kind of dance around the living room, Mm. just, you know, being my dad. Mm -hmm. I don't even know in retrospect, maybe he didn't love the movie. Maybe he just loved the music. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But these songs are, you know, a a deep part of my childhood. And Willie Nelson is a deep part of my childhood. I knew the basic storyline of the film. Mm -hmm. which is that he's a country music singer. Mm -hmm. He's got his band and he's married to Diane Cannon's character. Mm -hmm. And then he goes out on the road and he falls in love with um, Amy Irving's character. Mm -hmm. And that's all I remember. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember the details. But then we saw it and boy, that movie did not age well. So, uh, so me, tell me, tell me your visceral response to this film. Well, I, it it's all started out like I always say that I like country music, and today I realize that I don't. I like Dolly Parton. Oh, and that's about it. Okay. And I don't know any country music, so I think like maybe I just really don't like country music. Okay. And I didn't know that until today. So it started off really innocently, like I I was like, oh, okay, cute you know, whatever. And then I liked, you know, the first couple of songs because country music, it's all the same chords. It's like the blues, right? Like Mm -hmm. it's the same chords and, you know, a couple of, you know, a couple of rounds of those chords. Fine. Mm -hmm. There was some beautiful singing. Mm -hmm. I guess like, I don't care for, for Willie Nelson. Like I've, I've never really got, like, I Mm -hmm. never got it. So you, but you have to really like Willie Nelson to watch this movie because he's in yeah. every scene. He is in every scene. Yeah. It's true. And at some point I was like, this is too much Willie Nelson for me. Yeah. I think you, uh, you got tired of looking at him. Yeah. Cause I find him heinously unattractive. Mm. And this is a good, this is a point that I need to make. I usually don't need to make that point. I'm not saying everybody needs to be attractive, but he has, you know, he's, we're supposed to believe that he's some sort of like very charismatic, like magnetic, like Mm -hmm. a a man. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, oh my God, I cannot, I can't, I cannot accept Willie Nelson (laughs) as a stud Mm -hmm. or a homme fatal. And I was like, and then at some point it it was kind of long. So I was like, yeah, it was a long movie. It was, it felt the whole length of its two hours. Yeah. And, and it was, there was nothing about it that I could grasp onto. There, it was just a movie about things and people and the way, you know, that, that I do not agree with whatsoever. Okay. So it was everything about it. Like, you know, there was nothing that I could relate to, mm. even at like a very fundamental, like a universal level. Like, I, it's just, it, this is a world where I do not want to be part of ever, ever. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not really intrigued by it. Mm-hmm. You know, the Confederate flags and mm-hmm. the the cowboy boots and the hats and the, you know, the, the whole Texas thing, the guns and, mm-hmm. and the women, like the, the treatment, the movie's treatment of women. Yeah, the movie does not treat women very um, well. None of it is of interest to me whatsoever. And I think at some point it got too long for me and mm. I got really annoyed. Yeah, you did. Yeah. To the point where I was like, oh my God, this is such a waste of time. I want my two hours back. Yeah. In a really mm-hmm. cranky, I was like, I want my two hours back so bad. And I should say for the listeners, you went into this with good spirits. Totally. Like you were, yeah. you were ready to see this I movie. was open-minded. Yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you at some point, mm. does this change your perception of Willie Nelson? Because I could, I could feel the pain in you as you were yeah. going through it. Yeah. But I don't know, like, you know that I like Willie Nelson, yes. but I don't know if you like Willie Nelson. And I, I never knew th- whether you did. I don't have any opinion about Willie Nelson. Now Even, you do. Now I, so, I think he's unattractive, but okay. that's about it. Okay, it's, okay. it's not, you know, like it doesn't change. It's I just, don't hate him. Yeah, it's just a question I, I, I think about in general and with things like this. Does a performance like this change? And it could be even like a dramatic film. Like I've mm-hmm. had performances in a film where it's changed the way I feel about the, the actor, the person. Mm. You know, it's been rare, but... Here's Willie Nelson, who's actually a real singer, a legendary songwriter mm-hmm. going way back mm-hmm. and has written some fantastic songs that, you know, for himself and that other people mm, have written. That's true. And he's just a legend and stand up guy, you know, um, you know, he did the farm aid thing to sort of help the farmers. I don't know if you heard about that. You know, he's, you know, he's kind of, I think, universally loved. This movie takes place in 1980. Or sorry, it was released in 1980. So it's kind of a 70s film. I get, I got the feeling watching this, it feels like a very late 70s movie to me. Mm. You know, the, the 1970s was a time both in music, I think, and in movies where people didn't know anything about anything. Mm. <laughs> and Willie, Willie Nelson, I'm not trying to make excuses for him. Mm. Willie Nelson maybe, you know, probably agreed to do this movie. And, you know, he comes in, he's not a professional actor. Mm. You know, I want to give him the benefit of doubt that he was kind of directed in a certain way. Of course he was, yeah. But I can't believe that, like, Diane Cannon would... Except that she does kind of play this fall girl. Mm. She, she, she's often the foil for terrible men in, in movies. That's uh, kind of the role she, she takes. There's Amy Irving in it, who... She was in Yentl. She was in... Da, da, da. She was big in the, in the 80s, I remember. She auditioned for Princess Leia. <laughs> mm. I don't think either Amy Irving or... Diane Cannon were known for their singing. Mm. Broadway production of Emma Daisy. She was in the film Honeysuckle Rose receiving a Razzie Award for Worst Supporting Actress. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. I didn't think she was terrible. I thought the role in the script writing was terrible. Mm -hmm. It has a 50% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm. Okay, so let's get into some of the problems Mm. of the film. Mm -hmm. Do you want to start? You want me to start? Um, I mean... I can't even, you know, get into the pro. I don't know if there were any problems of the film other than that I hated it. Mm-hmm. You know, so I know I don't really. Well, let's let's just yeah. take some of the elements that were going mm-hmm. on. Again, when maybe I, I I know I saw this before. Maybe as a child, you know, you see things differently. Mm-hmm. But seeing it now, I I saw some very poor script writing. Mm, okay. So let's take some things one by one. Mm-hmm. We're gonna do some critique here. Mm-hmm. The first problem with the script. Mm-hmm. At some point in the protagonist's arc, to come to terms with his or her failure Mm, or his or her foible it's got to be forced upon them that they have to come to terms with it somehow and then Mm. overcome that Mm. he did not do that Mm. right there was no for for every action that you take there has to be some kind of consequence Mm -hmm. for what you've done Mm -hmm. so what happens is he you know he I, i get the feeling that he and diane cannon their characters probably met in a music context and she mm-hmm. used to sing with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they got married and they had a, a mm-hmm. kid and then they have a, a, a ranch. Mm-hmm. And she's like, she has a great line where she said, he says, come out on the road with me. She says, I'm not going to go out on the road with 14 dudes. I don't want to live in a bus with 14 people was the line. There you go. So there's this, his best friend, mm-hmm. his daughter comes back into town, mm-hmm. I, I guess after finishing college. And she's a really good guitar player. His guitar player can't come on the road, so she they get her to come. Mm-hmm. She's 22 years old, and she's part of the band. 
they fall in love. Or do they fall in love, though? It's a really weird thing. Okay, so here's another script writing error. <laughs> yeah. Do they really fall in love, though? <laughs> well, it's... Okay, so it's one of these... We talked about this with uh, Mr. Holland's opus. Mm. It's, a, it's a complex kind of situation where mm. she adores him. Mm. She is a, she's a fan of mm. his. Mm. One of the reasons why Willie Nelson's character as written mm-hmm. is so poor mm. is he must know this. Mm. And he takes advantage of it. As a scriptwriter, I would hope mm. you would insert a scene right. where he says, no, you can't do this for this reason. Mm. Then again, am I just being... 2022. I don't, no, I don't know. I, for me, it's like, you know, maybe the movie was trying to portray a very realistic... This is where I was going to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Portrayal of, you know, what happens on the road, you know, in these kinds of band situations. Yeah. And I find it entirely, you know, believable that this would too. happen. And then he would like back out at, le- you know, and be like, well... Yeah. yeah. It's, so that's the other thing. Mm-hmm. That, so, okay. So there's two bad things mm-hmm. about the script. The third bad thing about the script mm-hmm. is the way Amy Irving's character is mm-hmm. done. Basically, her character arc is she's in the audience watching mm-hmm. while the two main characters mm-hmm. make up on stage without saying a word. Mm-hmm. It happens in song. Mm-hmm. So he plays this song. He sings this apparently a new song mm-hmm. for her, apologizing to her. Now that seems kind of sweet and i guess in the sense i was sort of conflict you were in agony at this point mm. i was sort of conflicted in that because i like this idea of the cinematic kind of situation of not having the necessary mm. you know cliche i'm sorry mm. it circumvents that by him singing a song to her mm. and it works um so I was conflicted there because in the one hand, he didn't have to come to terms with his mistakes. Mm. He didn't have to repent or apologize. Mm. Mm. But then again, that's a cliche as well. And he does it in song. So I I was very conflicted by that. But Amy Irving's character got completely shafted. Here's this 22-year-old impressionable Mm. woman, young woman, Mm. who's just left standing in the audience staring Mm. and left out in the cold, basically left out. Mm. That was terrible. Yeah. I mean, she'll get over it, though. She'll get over it. Yeah. I mean, she's young. I guess she, you know, she's had this great experience of being mm. on the road. Mm. But what did you think of any of that? Well, I, I didn't think... That's the thing, though. That's the, the reason why I hated this movie was because yeah. nothing in this scenario shocked me what... It, it didn't, like, mm. nothing... Yeah, there's nothing Everything shocking. was just, like... It, it kind of, like, felt like I was seeing somebody I know. Yeah. I was watching somebody I know go through this because like the vast majority of touring musicians cheat on their wives and spouses or girlfriends and then they just go back to them without Mm -hmm, any remorse mm -hmm, and then whatever relationship that happened on the road is sort of like it takes a back seat sometimes it resumes which is really weird right to me i think it's really weird but I mean, I personally know so many of these people. Yeah, I've been right. I've been a victim of this yes, situation. Yes, exactly. And so it just it wasn't really interesting to me. I think that's what what was so unforgiving about it is just. And then they didn't approach it in any interesting way. They didn't mm. make a state. The the script didn't make a statement about it. Like didn't really explore it. Just sort of threw it out there, just like my friends, you know, like, and it was kind of like watching, you know, somebody I know go through this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you see it happening from a mile away. And Mm -hmm. it's just like, it happens. And it's just like, oh, well, okay. Mm -hmm. That happened. Yeah. Um, And it was not particularly interesting to me. That's, for me, that was the most. In a way, it was, in a way, it was too, it was too realistic. Yeah, it was too realistic. And, um. I keep say I kept on saying like that Willie Nelson was gross and that he's heinously unattractive. I was joking about that because I know that a 22 year old could probably, you know, it's find very a realistic, man like that right. attractive, you yeah, know, totally. But like, but we'd call that predatory now. Yeah. So we didn't have that back in 1979. Right. right. Yeah. So, I mean, there was an element of it. So. Speaking from personal experience, I don't find it very predatory because as somebody who has been in the situation of the 22-year-old, we're not really victims either. No, but here's why, Mm -hmm. can I say why I find it predatory? Mm -hmm. Because they didn't have that conversation. He didn't say, think about what you're getting into. That's why he becomes an unsympathetic character. Right, right. I agree. But of course, she knows she knows what she's getting into. Mm-hmm. And she goes for it. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's her character, too. Mm-hmm. She's fresh out of college. She's a really good guitar player. Mm-hmm. And then she's got posters of him on her wall. Mm-hmm. 
danger sign, dad. Mm -hmm. He he does worry about it. Dad does mm -hmm. worry about it. But maybe that was super normal in the seventies. Like you know how I in, think that's in the seventies. Girls. Oh, what I was going to say. It, it, they hinted about mm -hmm. the infidelity. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing that you do in a script is you foreshadow, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there was must have been twenty different drops mm -hmm. about infidelity. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? Well, I think for a really long time, especially like in the nineteen seventies, you know, musicians just thought of girls as kind of like how they think about beer. Like, I, I'm serious. Like, you know, have you heard of the lobster tank? No. Okay, so the lobster tank is rock musician lingo for there's, there's like a green room and it's filled with girls, right, when you go backstage. And they're kind of like, you pick out the lobster, but they're clawing at each other, mm. you know, in, the, in this room, in this tiny room, because they're mm. like kind of fighting each other, you know. So it's like right. a lobster tank. Yeah. This lingo survived into the 2000s. Mm. Like, I think there's a lot of that in the musician community, in any like musician community. Maybe not in classical music, but jazz, jazz. has that. Mm -hmm. Jazz is very, very chauvinistic. I'm sure hip hop. Hip hop definitely has that. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because hip hop is like the biggest misogynistic. Well, but so is bear. like heavy metal. I yeah. mean, it's just as misogynistic. But, you know, I think music has really been. I love music and I love musicians. I love being in music. But for a really long time, it's been incredibly sexist, you know? Yeah. It's incredibly sexist. Yeah. And this was sort of like a weird reminder of that mm. and how things have gotten better and they used to be so much worse. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, oh man, I don't really want to like... I don't know. I, I, yeah, I just, I was like, I'm I thought annoyed. Of, yeah, yeah, I thought about it like right as it started. Mm. Um, it's like, oh, right. I don't know if this is going to be a good movie. Yeah. I'll, can I say this? Yeah. And you already hinted at one mm. of the things that I was thinking of while watching the, this movie. And I said it to you at one point. Mm. It's like, well, we're getting a view of Texas mm -hmm. in 1979. Mm -hmm. We talked about how real it is mm. or how real it felt. Have you ever seen The Deer Hunter? I think so, yeah. The the entire first act mm -hmm. is this wedding. I think it's a wedding and a, and a reception. Mm -hmm. And it's basically these people in a small town who know each other, getting to know each other, hanging out, and it's boring as fuck. Mm -hmm. And it's boring. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's De Niro and it's Christopher Walken and it's um, Meryl Streep mm -hmm. and I forget his name. Anyway. And then cut, and then it goes off. But for the movie to work, mm -hmm. you needed to have that innocence mm -hmm. and that boredom mm -hmm. in the first mm -hmm. half hour. Like right now, if that came out on Netflix and nobody knew about it, people would turn it off. Right. Because then they have to go back home right. again after going to Vietnam. So this movie, I thought about, I thought about the Deer Hunter because it was boring. The whole first half hour was really boring. But at the same time, we were really seeing like there was a rich authenticity to this texas existence mm -hmm. like these were real people mm -hmm. and the details like you know the the kids going and, and chasing an armadillo and catching mm -hmm. it and you know just little things like what do you do if your son takes the horse and you take the pickup how are you going to take the horse back well you just kind of drive really slow with the horse mm -hmm. you know the pick you know little details yeah, like yeah. this it was so rich with mm -hmm. these, the costumes the the outfits the party scene, it, it was a party scene, kind of like the deer hunter. So on the one sense, this was a very real world. And I think, you know, it's one of the things I like watching about foreign films when they do this. And by foreign films, I mean, non-American films where you really get to, when you really get to learn about a culture. Mm -hmm. This is what I loved about Korean films. Korean films are really good about mm -hmm. showing you a culture. This movie really showed you this culture. Mm -hmm. And I think you decided you don't like this culture. I'm not a fan of it either. Mm -hmm. I, like, I wouldn't want to be in it. We mm -hmm. saw a hint of it in, mm -hmm. when we went to Sonora. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm okay with it. I just don't, I'm not fascinated by it. Like, it's not pretty. It's not chic. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't want to see it in a movie. It's not your world. Yeah, it's really CC. not my world. It yeah. really isn't. I'm sorry. I'm from, I, I spent a decade in Paris. Like, yeah. I, <laughs> this is not it for yeah, me. Yeah. yeah. But then, you know what? Like, why not? You know, in a movie, I like learning about different cultures, different scenes. I like seeing how different people live. But this one is not particularly like interesting to me. I think also it was like, you know, I, I, I realized like how little things have changed mm. in certain parts of America as mm. I was watching this movie. Oh, good point. And 
I don't know how I feel about that. Mm. Like, that's not something that I admire about certain parts. Of- Can you think of any details or you don't want to mention any details? Uh, I don't know. I, you know, it's it's like, it's not a value judgment. I just don't know. Like, it's, it's like there's something so... Can I point? Yeah. Can I point out one? When he when he pulls out the Confederate flag, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, right, because you know, in in 1979, Mm -hmm. this was not a shocking thing, right, right. And I was wondering how they were going to deal with that. And you know, Willie kind of rolls his eyes. Mm -hmm. So at least there was that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. It kind of makes me wonder about. I don't know. It just, it just, it was a reminder of so many things, like of mm-hmm. how America is so weirdly segregated in a weird way. Yeah. What's so, yeah. this is what people like when people say America, blah, blah, blah. I'm mm-hmm. like, what America are you talking about? Yeah, um, I know. Texas is a different beast. And, and even within Texas, because yeah. you know what? Like this morning, I started this um, show on Netflix called Mo, mm. and it's about this. Palestinian guy Mm -hmm. who doesn't have a green card like he's illegal technically and he's been seeking asylum for 22 years or something and this takes place in Houston Texas he's hustling to feed his family he has a Mexican girlfriend who you know wants to marry him but then like he needs to take care of his Arab family His, his family is very Arab very Muslim his girlfriend is very Catholic and I just finished the first episode. It was great, you know, and, and it's so diverse. Like, it's Houston, Texas, right? He has, his best friend is black. When he gets shot, a bullet grazes his arm. He can't go to the hospital because he has no insurance. Mm-hmm, and he mm-hmm. goes to this tattoo salon. And this Asian tattooer stitches him up. And it's just different facets of mm-hmm. life in Houston, Texas, right? Mm-hmm. This is, this part of Texas is so different from what we just saw. And it's in the same state. And sometimes these divisions are in this within the same city, like these communities. And, you know, like a lot of minority communities, they overlap, like they interact with each other. Mm-hmm. They, they, they date each other, you know, like Palestinians and Mexicans, and Asians, like they, you know, blacks, they, you know, they, they kind of mix. But then this like weird, like Confederate flag waving segment of white people Mm-hmm. they want to keep to themselves. And I find that really interesting. It's not mm-hmm. even a value mm-hmm. judgment. It's I'm not even saying it's wrong. Mm-hmm. I just find it really interesting. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's like, why? See, I don't feel like I can say anything about Texas because I don't know it. Um, I don't know it either, but yeah. it's just based on what I've seen. No, I was just trying mm-hmm. to think of like a comment I could have to that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to like presume anything. But yeah, there's these different... This movie was Texas... Mm-hmm. Like white Texas. Yeah, yeah. Like deep white Texas, you know, farms. So what and, I'm trying to yeah. say with all that is mm-hmm. that I know that Texas is not all that. Like that that doesn't represent Texas. But was it in the 70s? I mean, is all of Maybe, this diversity in Houston a new thing? Because what you I described from so. the Netflix, Netflix yeah, show is yeah. something that I have... That's why I say I have no... I can't speak about Texas because what you're saying about this next Netflix show... Mm-hmm. I wonder how real that is. That is totally real. I okay. have a lot of friends Which from is what Houston, you're saying. Texas, yeah. Yeah, yeah, who are black and Arab. Okay, so that Asian. so then yeah. so then it's a matter of is this a change from 1979 to 2022, or has it always been that way and it's just never been represented in films? That's an interesting question. I think maybe I think there was diversity in Texas mm-hmm. for a really long time. I think like a lot of people I know were born in Texas in the 70s and they are not white whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And they have there have been these communities. They're not even tiny little pockets of communities. They're like huge communities. Mm-hmm. The black community in Houston, Houston is really big, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like and it's really weird like the the segregation I feel. Like. I mean, I I felt a little bit of that in like certain parts of California, like when we went to, you know. Yeah, it does happen, you know, when you get into yeah. the, well, I mean, if you're on a farm, if you're on mm-hmm. a ranch, if mm-hmm. you're if you're in a small town, because the thing about this movie is there's this infidelity mm-hmm. and then the whole community knows, mm-hmm. like they all know each other. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because I'm watching this TV show, Dark, mm-hmm. uh, this German TV show that season two, I'm just in love with, but it's, it's about a community and a close knit community mm-hmm. and the secrets that come out. But in this movie, I don't think there would be diversity in that situation. Mm -hmm. And so it is very much a movie about farmers on the farm and music Mm -hmm. in their community, Mm -hmm. which they keep very to themselves. Mm -hmm. And there's an audience for that. You look at the audience, it's all white people in Mm -hmm. the crowd, right? 
And so it's, yeah, it's this world. And I think you're right. It does keep to itself. Mm -hmm. It. I don't think it's exclusionary, but mm -hmm. I don't think many people want to enter into it. That, who are yeah, not, I don't. Who are not part yeah, of that nobody's life. Nobody's like looking at that and saying like, I want it. Yeah. But then the way I think of it is like, well, that's fine. You it's know? fine. That's yeah, fine. It's like... That's what diversity is all about. <laughs> Except that this is a very, yeah, it's a very closed yeah. world but that's what i think fascinates me about the world like mm -hmm. i think one of the problems i have with tv shows and movies today is it seems like we've talked about this last time mm -hmm. that you have to force every kind of color of the rainbow mm -hmm. and sexual and gender mm -hmm. in the spectrum in order to have a show mm -hmm. and that's just not very realistic to me mm -hmm. maybe because it's my white upbringing and my generation but you know it's if i watch a korean movie mm -hmm. I, I really don't want to see white people in it Mm. You know, I want to see I want to see a world of Korea. Now, if it's the world of Korea that has mm. white people in it, mm. that's great. But again, it goes back to this idea of mm. authenticity. Mm. If this movie was to be made today, you'd throw black people and Mexicans mm. and Asians and somebody would be gay and all of that to get the script mm. greenlit. Mm. So what I'm saying is that seems forced to me. And if, if there's one kind of thing that I'm trying to get at that I think there's two things, this is one of them is the sense that this is a fairly self-contained world mm -hmm. and it felt real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think I want to be a part of it, <laughs> but it felt real. Yeah. The other thing I thought was mm -hmm. um, worth defending in this movie is the music. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much you want to say on this. This to me is a high point of Willie Nelson's career. Okay. And songs like Whiskey River, mm -hmm. On the Road Again, Angel Flying Too Close to the Ground. Oh my God, that is just such a devastating the lyrics are incredible. Mm -hmm. That's a work of genius to me, that song. These are just classic, classic Willie Nelson songs. And really, I think, the peak of his mm. of his career. So it's interesting to, you know, to see him. I mean, there's obviously themes to other 70s films about music. You know, we talked mm -hmm. about A Star is Born. There's, there's similar themes going on. You know, the, the guy who writes the song, there's lots of alcohol, mm -hmm. lots of marijuana, and all of that is okay. Lots of drunk driving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything's okay. It's a t it's a time capsule of a certain you know it's a capsule of a certain period of time oh, where yeah. you where you were not aware of things mm. that are going on. But that swings me back around to this idea of the infidelity, mm. and me as an observer mm -hmm. from the outside watching this world that I really don't know much about. Mm -hmm. Again, and you hinted at this as well. I I think that this infidelity. <laughs> Is part of this world, and it's especially part of the songwriting world of country music. Mm -hmm. Like the thing that they say about country music, and she even does a reflexive yeah. line of dialogue mm -hmm. on this. Now you've got something to sing about. Mm -hmm. When she says, she goes up there and they, she says, I want to announce my divorce. Mm -hmm. Country music lyrics are very much about this. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I'm saying is it gave me a, a sense that I can understand now where these songs are coming from. Mm -hmm. Now, again, it's not a world. I've never really... I'm not much of a country music fan. I do like Willie Nelson. Mm -hmm. I like certain, you know, I like Emmy Lou Harris, who has a fantastic cameo in this film. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's certain country music that I that I like. Dolly Parton, mm -hmm. I like. I like some of the alternative country. Um, I like, like Whiskey Town. You know, I like Wilco when they do country things like this. But I thought it was a terrible movie. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I thought it was interesting world that they built mm -hmm. i thought it was weird that they had four editors four picture editors on this film mm. and it's like you guys didn't really trim this down did you they like were it's totally winging it yeah they were yeah. kind of winging i wonder if like there was firings and mm. it seems like there was a lot to this movie that was maybe i don't know reshot yeah. you know it's like it was one of those disaster somebody kind of, was winging it somebody yeah. was winging it mm -hmm. but yeah those two aspects i i liked the i liked the aspect that this is a world that i was entering into Movies about music. is the dog scratching at the mm -hmm. door i don't know if she's scratching at the door or if she's dreaming dreaming again. because mm -hmm. she yeah yeah we're fostering a we're, border we're collie. fostering a border collie and it's been really wonderful it's been amazing. Yeah, she's a yeah. total sweetheart. Yeah, she feels like she's part of the family. Which is scary because mm -hmm. we're only supposed to foster her for two months. Mm -hmm. And then she's apparently got a nice home in California waiting for her. Not a home yet, but... An interested owner? No, that she's going to be relayed to the L.A. Rescue Center. Okay. Foster her, rehabilitate her, find her. Oh, so they are going to train her and stuff? Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. That's the idea. Okay. Unless we want to keep her. We can't keep her. I mean, we 
We could, yeah. but it, it would make life very, yes, we'd have to really upset our life yeah. in order to do, to do that. How did we get onto that? Oh, she was scratching, scratching. at the door. Should we let her in? No, I don't. I think she was dreaming. <laughs> she runs in a full gallop when she's mm. dreaming. Like I've caught her and she does full gallops when she's, what's she doing? She, she just, yeah, I think she was sleeping and then <laughs> she woke up and I think we're almost done. Anyway. I think we're done. Is there anything else you want to say about this movie? I think I've been a little unfair about Willie Nelson. Because he's not his character. Yeah, he's not mm-hmm. his character. But it's hard because, like, one thing that I really like about you, and I do this mm-hmm. as well, is you and I both tend to really fall into a film. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I asked that question earlier. I don't I don't want it to upset my opinion mm-hmm. of Willie Nelson. It was just a t- terrible fucking script. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really badly done. But then again, if I'm going to give it benefit of the doubt, mm-hmm. I always like to give yeah. art a mm-hmm. benefit of a doubt. I'm, I'm not one of these. Mm-hmm. I'm the opposite of people who just cancel shit mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. whatever reason. Mm-hmm. There's a realism to this mm-hmm. that maybe is not bad script writing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I, I mean? Yeah. Like maybe it's just mm-hmm. how this world is. Mm-hmm. I, I believe that. All right. Well, I wanted to say that next week we are, I'm going to now announce it since we've been teasing it. Mm-hmm. We're going to watch the movie Singles. Mm, okay. Which is, mm-hmm. it's we're coming up on the... I can't believe this. Mm. We're coming up on the 30th anniversary of the movie Singles, which is about the grunge scene mm. in Seattle. 30th anniversary. Yeah, that sounds about right because yeah. I'm turning 40 next year. Mm-hmm. Crazy. So we're going to watch that. And yeah, this one was, um, I don't know. Neither of us have very good feelings about it. Right. But it's not going to change my opinion of Willie Nelson. Me neither because I had no opinion about him. Yeah. What did you think of this. Diane Cannon singing? Oh, it was great. Yeah, I don't think she's I known. Really I don't think she's known yeah. as a singer. I really liked her singing. Actually, that was the yeah. one thing that I was going to talk about. But she did this like she doesn't give it all away mm-hmm. in the beginning. Mm-hmm. She has a soft, yeah, you know, sort of a whispery mm-hmm. kind of tone. She's a nice vibrato and then too. She like kind of belts it, yeah, but not too much. And mm-hmm. that's really subtle. That's really hard to do. And they sounded control. really good together. They sounded great together. And I swear, everything was live. I don't. I think Willie Nelson would probably insist on mm-hmm. that. There's absolutely no lip syncing going on. But she sounded lovely. She, she sounded did amazing. Yeah, we didn't really get to hear much of Amy Irving. But what did you think of her? She was okay. So. Yeah, her first song. I didn't. I wasn't very impressed. But maybe it's because mm-hmm. she's nervous. I don't know. I didn't think of anything. Mm. I didn't think anything about her singing. Like it was. It was. Okay. It was. It was fine. Yeah, I didn't fine. think anything yeah. of her singing yeah. either. And it's interesting because for some reason I seem to remember Amy Amy Irving mm. being the better singer. Like when I saw it mm-hmm. years ago. But now I think it's, I think Diane mm. Cannon. All right. All right. Well, there we go. Mm-hmm. Sorry to all of the Honeysuckle Rose fans. I, yeah, I, I bet I bet my mom and my two sisters are listening to this going, oh, man. Because it was such a part of our childhood. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, times have changed. Like, oh, man, CC was great <laughs> until this. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't, I don't think that's going to be the case. But because I have a similar feeling mm. okay. as you do. Yeah. What else? What else is going on in life? Anything? Oh, you know, my life is all about the dog right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your life too. Is yeah. Good. It's it's kind of because yeah. we, you know, with a border collar, you can't you can't just take it for one walk a day. So mm-hmm. we take we take her out three times a day. Yeah. I wake up at six in the morning and I hike with her, mm-hmm. like full on just mountain climbing ish yeah. hike. Get like, your you get your yeah. your rain jacket on. And yeah, with it. Rain or shine, like mm-hmm. the other day it was pouring rain, still went out with her. Yesterday, right? Yesterday, yeah. yeah. There was this stubborn belly fat that I thought, like I attributed to my age. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is never going to go away. It's kind of gone now. Oh, in a week? Yeah. Wow. But I'm I'm averaging 15,000 steps a day Yeah, because of her. Because then you have to go and do your work and go mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Yeah. And then I take her in the afternoon and I'm usually out with her for like and you run. an hour yeah. to an hour and a half mm-hmm. and I run with her. Mm-hmm. And I'm not used to running, but I feel like I should run her. Because obviously she's dreaming about full gallops, yeah. you know. Um, and so, then we take her out at night. Yeah. And so that's what it takes to have a border collie. But it's funny when we take her out mm-hmm. for a walk... Mm-hmm. Koreans look at us like we're walking a, a nine-foot gargoyle. Because they have poodles and that's about it. Yeah. Especially in this neighborhood. I think if you go to other neighborhoods with like younger people who have like actual like dogs. Like Hanam or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's better. Even like Hongdae is better for dogs. Hongdae, yeah, yeah. that would make sense, yeah. But this, we live in like a, 
an old people kind of. But it's of, a weird kind of. We, yeah. Like we're we're right on this kind of. Mm-hmm. I want to say mountain range, not a mountain range, but there's a hill yes. that's going over an overpass, mm-hmm. and on one side of the hill is this very traditional. Mm-hmm. Which is great because we get the old markets mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then you go over the other side of the hill, which I do often, and there's like all of a sudden these beautiful people walking around, these beautiful young people. But walking those around. beautiful young people are also kind of stuffy too. Well, sure. Yeah, I, I, I'm not saying they're not. Yeah, yeah. The, but it's a it's a it's a difference. They have the poodles too. They have the yeah. poodles. Because so, yeah. I think everybody those... in Korea has the poodles, babe. It whether you're <laughs> whether you're seventy years old, you got a poodle. Or That's if you're 18 yeah. years old, you got a poodle. Poodles guess, are just the thing in Korea. I guess when I first moved to Korea, I lived in Itaewon. And okay. so that became my standard of Korea, and which is yeah. not at all representative. True. But everybody I know in Itaewon has an actual dog, mm-hmm. like a dog dog. Yeah. And so she would, you know, she would be fine yeah. in Itaewon. Right. Yeah. So a part of me is just like, why not just move and keep her, you know? Oh, my God. I know, but yeah. If she can go to a good home in California, I think we'll send her. Yeah. Well, Well, she adores you. That's part of the problem. She absolutely (laughs) adores you. Like she, I think she sees me as the... uh, The treat provider. The law of the father and the treat provider. (laughs) And then you, she just can't stop staring at you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Which makes sense. That's what I do too. But yeah. um, Also, I, we, we wanted to say... If Why don't we you, give a plug to Grace's yes, uh, foundation? Yes, yes, exactly. So Care Korea is in partnership with the Dove Project in Los Angeles. And so Care Korea is committed to saving dogs from the dog meat trade mm-hmm. and et cetera, but yeah. mostly the dog meat trade. And the, they are working towards um, putting a stop to dog meat. Yeah. And they are working towards like, you know, they're constantly writing to the government the president yeah Yeah, what what grace and christy are doing they're Mm -hmm. they're just my new heroes and they save a lot of dogs yeah and they put them in foster homes until they get adopted there's also like a training center like Mm -hmm. a home for dogs called run Mm. that they sometimes put some of these dogs who Mm -hmm. can you know who have been socialized who, who are okay with other dogs and they can run around there's even a pool there like it's great. It's a great facility. Mm-hmm. The objective is to get these dogs adopted, right? Yeah. To either Korean homes or sometimes they fly out to Los Angeles mm-hmm. or Vancouver mm-hmm. or Toronto. So they're constantly looking for flight volunteers. If you want to fly cheap to, you know. Yeah, they'll like pay your California. ticket or something. Yeah. I don't know if they pay the full ticket, but Mm. like they will definitely accommodate to your schedule. And like, you know, if you happen to be flying out, you can escort a dog Mm -hmm. to their new home. And fostering is also like a really, really important part of this process Mm -hmm. because the dogs need to like spend time with humans. Yeah. So it reconditions them back to normal life. And it makes them, the likelihood of them getting adopted is like so much higher. Yeah, Yeah. 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 Yeah, Care Korea and the Dove Project. If you are in California, and then yeah, Sarah was yeah, in a Sarah cage. Was in a cage for some reason. And then they she won't was disclose and then, as the a breed. Yeah, yeah, we don't know, but yeah, she but was, she definitely had babies. She had babies, and then the babies were taken away from mm-hmm. her. Yeah, so she's she was a traumatized little baby. But she's not like she's so good. She's, she's not. So she's good. not yeah. insecure. She's right. totally confident. Mm-hmm. She doesn't snap. She mm-hmm. doesn't. Well, she. She'll nip at the um, poodles if she can. Mm-hmm. But anyways, yeah, so Sarah is a dream um, border collie. We were really in love with her. We love her so much. Um, mm-hmm. And if she can go to a good home in L.A., we'll send her. Yeah. So that she can have, she can run around and mm-hmm. do her border collie thing. Yeah. And good for those owners. They'd be mm-hmm. lucky to have her. Yeah, they'd be very lucky to have her. All right. So we'll see you soon. I think we're going to do another podcast soon yeah. because of the anniversary. Mm-hmm. And yeah, take care, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Under the moonlight, I'll sing you a song So you'd magically feel a lot less alone Hopefully, they'll live eternally If we paint ourselves all bright with stories Sadness and war Of immeasurable pain Unconditional love Movies about music Whip!
Whiskey River, take my mind. <laughs>